Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kwami Asha Allah, Koholoyim La, Yahweh Bashmi Awashai, Bahashim Rakahakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth, and just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akhwaf. That's all here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashmi Awashai to the best of their ability. This is Ah Hananawa. It's coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And, um, this is this article on um, Jonathan Owens and Simone Biles. It's the, uh, this one is in, in the U.S. Sun. It says, fans tell Simone Biles to file divorce papers as soon as possible as husband Jonathan Owens calls himself the catch in relationship. And you know that says, come on, bro. They would prefer her divorce a man that she's with, that she's happy with, and to go out and basically commit adultery. Because that's pretty much overall what it's, it's going to boil down to. If a woman leaves her husband, she has to just stay single. That's scriptural. You got to stay single or you get back with him. Other than that, you are committing adultery. And here you go. You got so-called black women that so-called care about the black sisterhood. And why would you tell your sister, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to get away from her man? That's crazy. Anyway, it's not surprising, though. We understand that we live in America and we are under the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And the so-called white man has really done a number on us by separating the family. But hey, hey, we're coming back to a point of when the kingdom comes, we're going to be back straight again. We just got to endure the last part of these curses, man, in these last days. But anyway, it says fans have told gymnast um, legend Simone Biles to divorce her husband, Jonathan Owens, after a comment he made about their relationship. The Green Bay Packers safety appeared on the Pivot po podcast this week and spoke about the Olympic gymnast, Biles, who he wed in this spring. You know, hey, a little handsome little, little couple, couple. Owens was alongside former NFL star Ryan Taylor and Channing Crowder. On his hit podcast this week, the 28-year-old talked about his wife, Biles, and discussed how he first connected with the Olympic gymnast through the celebrity dating app, Raya, in 2020. Right? So, okay, so they're on a dating app meeting. Obviously, she couldn't find nobody around her. Here you go. You're, you're that famous. You know, uh, you know, all these millions of people are following you, and all these people know you, and you got to go on a dating app. To find someone that says a lot right there in itself obviously she wasn't seeing quality in people that was around her <laughs> Shit. okay it says then owens revealed that biles made the first move with a message okay and, and hey it is what it is she made her she, she, she shot her shot and they mad at that shit, man there's plenty of women that shoot they shot at men all the time it says however he admitted to taylor and crowder that he didn't know who the seven-time Olympic medalist was at the time. And a lot of people don't follow stuff like that. A lot of people don't follow um, um, Olympic sports. There's plenty of people in the Olympics, I don't know, that are great at their craft. It says, I didn't know who she was at the time, but, like, the first thing I saw was she's got a bunch of followers. So in my mind, I'm like, she got to be good, right? The Packers star then told the host that he was busy at training camp in college when Biles was a multi-Olympic gold medalist. Owens and Biles became an item in 2020. The rest is history. The two eventually got engaged, got married earlier this year. Later, Clark asked Owens, so you was really the catch? And really, it was kind of jokingly. Owens answered by saying, I always say men are the catch. And it, that's, that, that's, that's the part, part that really killed him. You the catch. See, in America, they have set the woman up on this pedestal so high that, how dare you? No, I'm the prize. Motherfucker can't cook, can't clean, won't cook, won't clean if they can. You know, bunch of damn baby daddies. And I'm not saying that for all women, but you got women in these particular situations that's expecting top-notch shit, man. They, they be acting as if they fresh off the fl showroom floor when, when pretty much you a lemon that needs a damn engine and a trans, man. You know, you need body work. <laughs> I mean, come on, bro. These are the women that be in these comment boards talking all this shit. Girl, I can't believe. You know, come on, man. You will skip paying rent to go get a, a BBL, man. We, we talking about this is how destroyed <laughs> our people are. Okay, but it says that response caused plenty of criticism from fans on X, formerly known as Twitter. One wrote, Simone Biles' husband is a walking red flag. It's a walking red flag for him to say that he's the kid, for him to be confident in himself. 
That's a that's a red flag. But don't women want a confident man? At least that's what they say. So because this man got confidence, that just throws them. They can't fucking believe it. How dare you? Because they look down on so-called black men so hard. We've been downtrodden. The tribe of Judah, man, we done called it the worst on this planet, man. Anyway, it says another commented, file those divorce papers, Simone. See, this is how they thinking. And I'm not saying, you know, this is just a few. They're going to throw a few, you know, but I mean, when you read the majority of the comments, though, really, you know, <laughs> they, they, they not with this. So we know that. And we see it, man. We see this shit all the time. There's plenty of videos, plenty of TikTok videos, plenty of YouTube videos. You can walk into Walmart. You can walk into your damn local Target. You're going to see this type of attitude, man, anyway. So it's not like we don't know that this exists. And that's why a lot of women are so damn lonely, man. A lot of women, you know, it's a lot of nice-looking women out here that's lonely as hell, especially when they hit, like, the 30s, late 30s, 40s, 50s. You know, they still out here trying to have that attitude of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the prize. I'm the catch. I need this type of man. But you growing old by yourself, man. As a matter of fact, it's an article in here. I, it was another article. Let me just read the article title and I'll come back to this because I, I wanted to do like a little separate lesson on it. But check this out real quick. Here's the article right here. It says a disproportionate number of black women are are kinless as they age. Advocates say they deserve a social safety net, too. And when you're going into the article and I'm reading an article, article, they don't have no kins people. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not getting married. They're not having children. So they're getting older. And then they're realizing, oh, shit, I'm old. Who's going to take care of me in case something happens? That's a real article. I, I, <laughs> I seen that. And it didn't surprise me. It didn't surprise me. And then, you know, the women that, that are out here that do have children, you know, it, it, it's still kind of, you know, hard to get real help when 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 it's time for, for help to come. man. you know, they look for the sons of the family basically to take on the role of, you know, like a like a um, a husband, so to speak. Oh, my son, my son, you know, the, the, the son, he his his mother, he's really in a marriage with his mama a lot of the times in these um, um black so-called black neighborhoods and things of that nature, man. They look to the son like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, you, you, you trashed his dad. You talk shit about his dad. You kept the kids from the dad. You put the damn dad on all kinds of, um, um, you know, uh, uh, bill pays and shit, you know, uh, child support and this, that, and the third. And then as he grows up and he gets a job, now he got to take care of you. Anyway. <sighs> Let's see what the rest of this says. And I'm going to grab some scripture. Salakia, y'all, for the rant. Uh... Okay, it says he, he, he man, they, I'm going to start back from here. Owens answered by saying, I always say that, that the men are the catch. The response caused plenty of criticism from fans on X, formerly known as Twitter. Of course, uh, you know, filed them divorce papers. It says a third said, the way this unknown man, see that? They had to belittle the man. You may not know him, just like he didn't know Simone Biles. But he's a professional NFL player. He's obviously good at what he is. Um, uh, at what he does because you, you you don't just make the NFL. There's plenty of people out here that's you know that's that's good at a sport, but they don't necessarily make it to the pro. So obviously they seen something in him. But he's unknown because she's the one that's more popular. See, the way this unknown man sat there and tried to humble his wife. No, he didn't sit there and try and humble his wife. He just said what he said. If it humbled her ass, then too, hey, I mean it is what it is. <laughs> Simone Biles, the most decorated gymnast in history. Simone Biles and the worst of Adele, divorce, babe, divorce. See this? This shit is retarded. It, 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 it. On Thursday night, Owens posted an Instagram and appeared to respond to criticism from fans. And he done the right thing with this one. <laughs> it says he posted wedding pics of himself and Biles as the caption read, unbothered. So basically he's telling you bitches, I'm unbothered. We're not bothered with what you're talking about. We're not about to allow you, 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 you ratchet ass, hood ass, you know what I'm saying? To, to, to torture, you know, to, 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 to basically destroy our relationship. Here you go. This is, this shit is retarded, bro. He says, just know we locked over here. All right. Well, I hear you. I let them know we locked over here. We're not trying to hear that shit. 
And Simone said, you know, she stuck up for him too. You know what I'm saying? As far you know, she said some, you know, some 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 real kind words. You know what I'm saying? She was like, well, shit, hey, they may not know him now. They may look at him basically as you know Simone Biles' husband, but you know soon they're going to be looking at you know me being his wife, some some to that extent. But anyway. But anyway, you, you, you see what it is. Let's see the comments. This person says, my husband sits under the tree every Christmas morning with a bow in his head and waits for me to wake up because he is my gift. It's funny. Stop trying to ruin that poor girl's marriage. Okay. But like I said, again, everybody don't believe this way. You see? If you allow social media to dictate your relationship, then you shouldn't be together anyway. Hey, I got to agree there. Social media basically runs the world now, which is ridiculous. This was a, uh, another lady. Uh, let me see here. This is a dumb reason for divorce. She loves him, and and everyone says things that are offensive sometimes. That why, why would that be offensive though? Why would that be offensive? You know what I'm saying? Here you go. She's on the dating app. She texts him first. He's the catch. <laughs> Come on, guys. Damn. Anyway. Really, really, while the bashing, everything is not that serious. We take things and run with it. Quick to point fingers and use anything. Oh, fuck out of here. Says divorce. What jealous women are telling Simone to break her vows over a statement that isn't even abusive? If he even said it, please have se uh, several seats. Yeah. Well, here you go. Somebody finally mentioned something about some scripture. God said the woman was made for the man. Stop twisting what's already set up. It's not domineering is god's word why else are we labeled as the protector the provider the repair the head hey yeah well, there you have it let's go into the scriptures then <laughs> let's go into the scriptures um this right here you see i was already here first corinthians 11 let me see here because i wrote a few precepts down but let's let's read uh first corinthians 3 and the uh, 11 11 and 3 first it says what i will have you know that the head of every man is Yahweh Shai, and the head of the woman is the man. See that? And the head of Yahweh Shai is God, Yahweh. So that's the order. You have the Father, Yahweh, which the world, you know, they call him the Most High and all these different titles, but his name is Yahweh, which means that he exists or the existing one. And then you have his son. That's the order. His son, Yahweh Shai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus. He's next in line as far as the order. Which his name is Yahweh Shai, which means he's the savior or deliverer in Paleo Hebrew. Then you have the man, and then you have the woman, and then you have the children, and then you have the damn dog or pet if you got one. Hell, I guess. Because some people, even man, they put their damn pets above people. You be having people, man, fighting, uh, 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 you know, and, and taking people back and forth to the court after getting a damn divorce over a fucking dog, man. So this place is through. Anyway, let's get verses eight and nine. Verse 8, it says, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. And, and, and these people, they'll be in these comment boards and they'll tell you they're Christians. But when you get to bringing out the scriptures, everybody's a, a Christian till the scriptures come out. That's what um, uh, uh, Elder Malcolm would always say, GMS Chicago. Everyone's a Christian until the scriptures come out. Because, you know, they, they, they're used to a Western um, mindset. That's what that, that's what's going on. It's the Western mindset that they're used to. Okay, so now let's go into First Peter. And I'm hoping that my lessons will even upload, man. They just sent me that damn email. You know that all the brothers been getting about. You know what I'm saying? The bullshit. Your 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 uh, your channel was not act some crazy shit. You know I done got it on a few of my channels already. I'm Jake out here shooting this motherfucker's boy. Anyway, let's continue. So like you. First Peter chapter three. Let's start at verse one. It says, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Right. That if any obey not the word that also may without the word be won by the, the conversation of the wives. So basically, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a good woman that's into this truth. Her man may not be into this truth, but she can win him over just by going with the scriptures. How is she going to win him over? But she by doing what the scripture says to do, to treat him as the scripture says to treat him as the head of the household. You know. 
And you know, other things that go with it is the scripture. She, if she's following the scriptures and she's te and she's treating her man the way that the scripture says to treat him, she can actually come. This man can be converted through that. Like, damn, why is my woman? You know what I'm saying? You know. But anyway, verse two, it says, while they behold your chastity conversation coupled with fear. See, matter of fact, let me read this in the NLT. The New Living Translation, it says in the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands. Then, even if some refuse to obey the good news, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. They will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to Yahweh. Right? So it doesn't mean that you know what I'm saying, you can't dress yourself and all that stuff like that. But your main beauty should be inward beauty. Your main beauty should come from within, man. Being like Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai told you to be. Right? It says, this is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. They trusted Yahweh and accepted the authority of their husbands. See that? For instance, Sarah obeyed her husband, Abraham, and called him her master. You are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husbands might do. See, you are the daughters of Sarah, man. Our foremother Sarah called our forefather Lord, man. She called her. She called him her Lord. But they, hey, we are a long ways from that. But these these are Christians, man. These Christians, they tell you they're Christians. But when you bring out these scriptures here, uh, uh I'm no longer a Christian, at least not on that part. Let's get Colossians 3 and 18. I just got a few more precepts, y'all. Uh, because I've seen it. And, and, you know, brothers been going in on it. Um, a lot of brothers done lessons on it. The, the, the elder out in um, GMS uh, Vegas. Uh, I seen one earlier, a few hours ago, with um, Apostle uh, Gabar. He done a lesson on it, real good lesson on it. A lot of brothers um, touched on it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, let's see here. But this is Colossians 3 and 18. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things for this well pleasing for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. So and, and there you have that order again. You have that order again. Wives, submit yourselves to your, your own husband, you see. But when it comes to. The men are submitted, uh, submissive to the woman in this day and time, and the woman is not submissive to the man. So, like I said, again, Esau, everything that Esau does is backwards, right? He does everything. Everything that he does, it goes against the scriptures, but he try and make it seem as if he's righteous. He, it, This motherfucker is really like the wicked that the Bible speaks of, for real, for real. Everything that the Lord said was good, he makes it out to be bad. Everything that the Lord said is bad, he makes it out to be to make it seem as if it's good. As a matter of fact, let's let's get that scripture real quick. Uh, it's been a minute on that one. Oh yeah, Isaiah chapter five and verse twenty. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil. See, it's evil to say that the woman is above the man. You see, it, 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 it's out of order. It's not the order that the Lord set up. Um, it says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And this is what this man does. He switches everything around. He has the damn kids above the dad. He has the mom above the dad. The dad just somewhere in the fucking basement or something, man, just in a damn car. You know, he, he, he has to create something that he calls a man cave just to just get away. The only piece that he can really get is playing a damn video game with his headset on. He just wants to get away from the world by playing some 2K. <laughs> he playing some Madden, man. He out here playing some Call of Duty. Like, you know, this, this, this is the only time that I can have some peace. Anyway, let's go to Ephesians real quick. Ephesians chapter 3. Five. We'll start at verse 22. Let me see. Maybe one up. Uh, yeah, let me just get to the point. Verse 22. I'll read this in the NLT as well. The New Living Translation. It says, for wives. This means 
submit to your husbands as the Lord, as to the Lord. So you're supposed to submit to your husband. And people, you know, they, they act as if submission is, is something bad. The Lord created that. That's a good thing. There's order with submission, man. We as men, we're supposed to submit to our father, Yahweh, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. You know, there, you know, every I mean, hell, when you go to a job, you got to submit to your damn boss. Even if you go to uh, say, for instance, you go to a damn McDonald's drive through, you got to submit to the person that's taking the fucking order. I mean, <laughs> I mean, but when it comes to the most important part of your life, your husband, your household. Oh, no. Uh -uh, that, uh -uh, that's 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 um, that's slavery. Anyway. For wives, this means submit your submit to your husbands as the Lord for a husband is the head of his wife. See that? As Yahweh Shai Mashiach is the head of the church, he is the savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Yahweh Shai, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. Wow. Verse 25 for husbands. This means love your wives. Just as Yahweh Shai loved the church, he gave up his life for her. So there you have it. So the man is supposed to love the wife, but the woman is not supposed to submit to the husband. It's crazy. See, she wants to love. She wants you to submit to her. She wants it all because that's that, that queen of heaven um, um, worship, man. Anyway, let me see here. I got, let's grab a couple of more. Let's go to 1 Timothy. This is a classic right here, too. And there's plenty of more, you know. I'm going to start at verse 11. It says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man. See that? But to be in silence. She's not supposed to be above the man. That's out of order. We just gave you the order. Yahweh, then his son, Yahweh's side, then the man, then the woman and the children. And of course, your damn dog, if you got a pet. <laughs> I'm just being, you know, funny on that. But anyway, verse 13 for Adam was first formed, then Eve, see? And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the, in the transgression. See that? Verse four, let me get that in the NLT. It says, and it was not Adam who was deceived by Satan. The woman was deceived and sin was the result. Why? Because she was out of order. She was out of order. She should have said, hey, no, nah, you need to um, go kick it with my husband about that. Go speak with my husband about that. He, you know, I'm not allowed to talk to you. Get the hell out of here. Okay, anyway, but um, let's go to the, the old school. Let's get um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. It says, And Yahweh said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. See? supposed to be a help me someone to help you not stress you the fuck out man here you go to man go to work i i i know i know i know a dude and you know i i you know even before i came in the truth you know i, I knew that the shit was wrong you know but hey i mean hey this that that's just i can't tell nobody how to run a household that's what they do and this dude he worked he would get up in the morning cook breakfast, get his daughter ready for school. We ain't talking about no son or nothing like that. You know, he do her hair. I'm talking about all this shit. His wife literally in bed. He used to do this shit every damn day. He'd come home from work, cook dinner. You know what I'm saying? He'd wash the clothes. He would give her an allowance. You know what I'm saying? To basically just go and do her, you know, got her brand new car. Everything that she wanted, he would just pay for it. And he would give her money to go out and just do her thing throughout the week. Now, mind you, she won't get up and get the baby ready for school. He had to drive the baby to school. She wouldn't even do that. Drive the kid to the school. Pick the kid up from school. Come home. Put on dinner. Keep the clothes clean. All manner of shit. Cleaning up the house, the bathroom, the kitchen. And she's just not doing a goddamn thing, man. And then it eventually came to a point where, you know, I, you know, one, one, one night, you know, I, 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 I dropped by. He's sitting in the damn driveway in his truck. He got a gun in his hand and a fifth of um, damn, um, what the fuck is that drink? Paul Masson or Paul Mason, whatever you want to call it. 
fifth of that in his lap. He's crying, eyes are red and shit, talking about how he want to kill himself because she, uh, you know. And then eventually they, they ended up divorcing. Now, he's with another woman now. Now, when I tell you that other woman is night and day from the woman that he was with, she, that, that other woman appreciate all the shit that he would do. You know, because, you know, he was good at cars. He was good at fixing on shit. He was good at electricity. I don't give a fuck. I call him the jack of all trades. I don't give a fuck what it was. If, if, if it could be done, he was doing it. If he had the tools to do it, he could do anything. I, I, I ain't ever come across nothing that that guy couldn't do. He'll put in a damn toilet. That motherfucker will put in a bathtub. he put in a sink, a dishwasher. He'll wire the damn house. <laughs> I'm talking about everything about a car he knew. He was into robotics. He wasn't no lazy guy, you know what I'm saying? And he had a, 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 a just a, 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 a terrible wife, man. Terrible wife, but not this new woman that he's, now she want him back. But he done been with this other woman for some years and I don't see him going back to that shit. I think he done seen the light. But you know, I just, you know, pointed that story out because it just, it, it was just so crazy to me. And I used to try and tell him, like, hey, well, you know, hey, bro, I mean, shit, man. Hey, hey you know, the scriptures actually says if she, if she doesn't do, roughly paraphrasing as you please, basically, man, give her the damn divorce papers. And, and she was, you know, doing her thing on the side on him and all kinds of shit. So she was wicked as hell. You know, but anyway. But the woman is made to be a help meet, man. Now, I know we're not living in those days and times. They'll tell you that's old school. Girl, I can't believe you doing it. Girl, this, that, because, you know, they can go on Instagram and all these different damn sites and have likes and niggas gawking all over them and, you know, losing their goddamn mind over them and putting in the comments and, and they being flown out to places and all kinds, just being damn slut buckets, man, overall. So, but it's coming a time period where women are going to really realize that, hey, all right, I need a man. And I'm telling you, that article, I want to get into that article a little bit more deeper. That might be the next lesson that I do. That one that I just had went into about the, the women aging, kinless. And I didn't really think of it as a thing. I know some people, they're like that. But it, that, that's, a, that's happening quite a bit. There's a lot of, I know, I know plenty of women that's in their 30s and 40s, never had children. They don't have nobody to look out for them. They don't have no, you know, and, and they're still not going to have no, you know, they, they, they're too far gone in their mind to, to even submit to a man. They're too stuck, you know, too into their ways. They're, they're stuck in their own mindset now. You know, that's why you have to, you know, it's better you catch a woman when she's younger, man. You know what I'm saying? Really, in the ancient days, you know, that was very young. These days, you know, Esau call it, um, you know, pedophilia when he's the one that's into pedophilia. <laughs> he's the one out here trafficking every goddamn body. But anyway, let's get this one last one. Uh, Genesis 3 and 16 I'll end out here Yahar Ratazah And it reads Unto the woman he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrows And thy conception In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children And thy desire shall be To thy husband and he shall rule over thee. And, and that's that's what it is, man. That's pretty much what the deal is, though. So, hey, we definitely at the at the point of the end, man. And you women, man, y'all got to get it together, man. Hey, treat your men the way that the scriptures say to treat them. And men, treat your, your women the way that the scripture says to treat them. You know what I'm saying? If you, you got one, <laughs> hold it down because this thing is rare these days. So with that, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwame Yashallah.